Uh, for those of you that have joined us online, welcome to Chicago Tai Chi. We've also got a full house in here in the studio for our World Tai Chi and Qigong Day celebration. I've got 10 o'clock central, so let us begin. Let's get up. So a fundamental characteristic of Tai Chi and Qigong is that we aim, as we move, to relax at ever deeper levels. And for many of us, uh, movement and relaxation uh, is new. So before we start moving and relaxing, let's just stand for a moment. And one way that we can relax is to trigger a physiological relaxation response. And we can do that with our breath. So what we'll do for just a, for just a moment is to inhale to a comfortable depth. Not so, not so that you feel strain or tension, but just inhale a little more deeply than you might normally. And then exhale, let go. Inhale to a comfortable depth. Exhale, let go. And keep, keep doing that for a few more breaths. That exhale stimulates a relaxation response. It stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is part of our autonomic nervous system, that when stimulated, relaxes us, slows our heartbeat, allows our arteries to expand, allows blood flow to increase to our internal organs. And we can do, we can trigger that. It's a nervous system hack. We can trigger that with our breath. So inhale. Exhale and feel your body let go just a little. Inhale. Exhale. And if, uh, if you take that on as a practice, you'll find that, that that breathing depth that triggers relaxation becomes a tool you can use when you need or want to relax yourself. All right. So we're going to begin, we're going to warm up with a couple Qigong movements that are favorites here at Chicago Tai Chi. Uh, and for those of you that are new to Qigong, Qi is the Mandarin word for internal energy. Gong roughly connotes practice. So Qigong's energy practice. And within the world of Qigong, there are standing, seated, moving, interactive Qigong practices. Uh, most of the Qigong I teach here at Chicago Tai Chi involves movement. And these are low impact movements, but movements that get the whole body moving, that promote circulation and all the good things that physical activity does on one hand. And on the other hand, according to Qigong theory, these movements may stimulate circulation of internal energy. So whether you feel any stimulation of circulation, whether you feel stimulation of uh, internal energy today is an open question, but you might. And if you do, it may be associated with these movements. So before we begin moving, I want to mention one thing. So we're, we're going to do a movement that looks something like this. So we're going to elevate our arms. And if you've got something going on in a shoulder joint, elevating your arms too much may hurt. And Qigong and Tai Chi can be wonderful practices for healing your body, but not if you're hurting it. So for example, if I've got something going on in my shoulder, here's how I do that movement. I would aim to move my arms within a pain-free range of motion, uh, however small. So again, uh, all the movements we do today, we're aiming to do pain-free. So if you need to shrink them down so you can do them pain-free, that's the idea. All right, so for starters, widen your stance a little. Sink into your legs a comfortable amount. Place your hands, palms up in front of your hips. This move is called lifting the sky. It's a lovely move. So begin to stretch up through your legs. Elevate your arms and hands. Somewhere in the throat, they turn over. And now circle out and sink into your legs to get back to the starting position. Stretch up through the legs to elevate the arms and hands. Sink into the legs to lower the arms and hands. Circling up and out as you stretch. Circling down and in as you bend. So I love this movement as a warm-up. So just feel what's going on in the body. 
We're working the big muscles of the legs and the hips. We're not pounding them, but they're definitely activating. So that's increasing blood flow to our legs and hips. We're moving the arms through the shoulder joints through a comfortable range of motion, loosening up the shoulders, upper back, neck, chest. Stimulating blood flow to the legs, arms, shoulders. So a really nice whole body warm-up without pounding. Low impact movement. Now, this is a Qigong movement. So the idea is that it can stimulate circulation of internal energy, at least according to Qigong theory. So we can play around with that a little bit, if you like. So follow me. So come to here, and I'll get your mind in the top of your head. Just feel the top of your head, and then inhale, and on the exhale, release from the top of the head down through your whole body to your feet. So inhale, exhale, release down. Aiming to at least Stimulate a relaxation response down your body. And at least according to Jung theory, that might stimulate a downward circulation of energy in the body. Helping you relax, helping you quiet the mind. Release down. Release down. So if you get any sense of that downward release, that's, that's okay. Now, what about going the other way? So get your mind beneath your feet and now draw to the top of your head and the tips of your fingers if you can, and then release back down. Draw. Release down. And according to Qigong theory, one way that energy flows through the body is up and down. And maybe this move helps stimulate that. Nice. And as you relax, I encourage you to feel, is there anything changing in the quality of your movement? What I'm seeing in the studio and online is people's movements becoming more smooth and continuous. And that's what happens as you relax and move at the same time. Two more of these. Inhale. Exhale, release down. Inhale, drop if you like. Exhale, release down, come back to the starting position. All right, we're going to change it up a little bit. We'll be doing the same thing with the lower part of the body, bending and stretching. But now we're going to move the arms and hands a little differently. So on this side, turn your palm down. And as you stretch up the leg, follow me. The hand that's palms up goes up. The hand that's palms down goes down to the side of the hips. And then you sink into your legs again. The hand that's up comes down. The hand that's down comes up, and then you repeat it on the other side. So now we have introduced asymmetric arm movement. And one idea in Qigong theory is that energy goes up one side of the body and down the other, and maybe this move can stimulate that. And whether it stimulates that or not, it's an open question. But you might feel how you are stretching your body a little differently in this move than you did in the first one. Up one side, down the other. And in Tai Chi and Qigong, one uh, element of these movements as exercise are we are aiming to exercise our internal organs 
liver, spleen, kidneys. And this move, so if you're going up your right side, you're lightly stretching your liver. As you go up your left side, you're lightly stretching your spleen and then releasing that stretch. And that stretch and release is going to promote circulation of blood and other fluid and all those vital organs. And the more you relax, you might get a little back, back toward the kidneys as well, exercising those important parts of us. And one of the sources of Tai Chi and Qigong as a powerful practice for health and healing is how it works internal organs. Nice. Two more. And this move is called separating heaven and earth. Both of these moves come out of a popular Qigong set called Eight Brocades. So come back to the starting point. Now you can step in and just take a moment and breathe. Feel how you feel. You can move the shoulders around, you can move the legs and hips. Our heart rates are up a little, our respiration rates up a little. We're warmed up, ready for more now. So what I'd, like to, what I'd like to do is to begin to teach you the first move of a Tai Chi form. And the, uh, you practice Tai Chi, for those that are new to this, uh, one way to practice Tai Chi and a, a main way to practice Tai Chi is in a, a Tai Chi form. And a Tai Chi form is a sequence of prescribed movements. And this is the first movement of uh, a form I teach. The movement's called commencement. It's pretty straightforward. Let me show you, and then we'll do it. That's it. So follow me. Sink in your legs. Your arms come up. Stretch up through the legs. The arms extend. Sink in your legs. Retract the arms. Stretch up through the legs as the arms go down. So here we're bending. Lightly stretching without strain. Bending. Stretching without strain. Bend. Stretch. Bend. Stretch. Now, a fundamental characteristic of Tai Chi movement is we aim to power and control the arms and the hands with the legs and the waist. Thereby connecting the body and using the most powerful muscles of the body to power our movements. And you can begin to get a sense of that in commencement in this way. So follow me. Now sink in your legs and have that sinking help bring your arms up. Stretch up through the legs. Have that come out to your fingertips. Sink into your legs again, have that retract the arms and hands. Stretch up through the legs, have that stretch, send your arms stretching down. Sink into the legs. See how that can help the arms come up? Stretch up the legs, continue to stretch to the fingertips. Sink into the legs, retract the arms and hands. Stretch up through the legs, the arms go down. And repeat. Bend. Lightly stretch. Bend, lightly stretch, bend, lightly stretch, bend, stretch. So this movement, as Tai Chi movements go, is pretty straightforward. It's symmetrical. The components are basically bending and stretching the legs and arms. And Tai Chi movements, as we progress, into our forms get increasingly sophisticated, combining more movement components, often becoming um, asymmetrical, which for most of us, oh, you know, that's a little tricky to put together at the beginning, but with practice, everyone gets it. Now, if you like, 
And this is optional. You can do Tai Chi just as physical movement, but you can also incorporate Qigong. And you know, past beginning levels, for those that like to do that, Tai Chi can incorporate very sophisticated Qigong. And we can play around with that here. So follow me. Pause. Now feel the top of your head. And just like we did in our Qigong exercise, inhale. Now exhale and release down the body as the hands come back and go down. And feel how this movement may be able to help you stimulate, stimulate that downward release. Relaxing as you move. Release down. And many people uh, that get into Tai Chi describe one of the reasons they love it is it helps them relax. And that's relaxing the physical body, releasing tension from our muscles and soft tissue. It can also involve relaxing emotions. I think we're all familiar with what it's like when our emotions are not relaxed. It can also mean relaxing your mind. We're all familiar with it, what it's like to have a busy mind jumping all around. Tai Chi, many people report, helps them quiet the mind, which can feel good. All right. All right. You're all off to a wonderful start. I propose we increase the degree of difficulty a little. And we're going to do an exercise called Tai Chi walking. So for those of you in the studio, I encourage you to position yourself so you're facing that direction, facing the scroll here. And put the leg that's on this side forward. Switch legs. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. And then here on, on Zoom, we've got this side leg forward. So we're going to build up this walking exercise with discrete movement components. And each of the movement components is pretty straightforward. You'll get it. And then we'll, we'll put it all together. So, so the first movement component, we've got to wait for it. Shift weight back. Shift weight forward. Shift weight back. Follow me. We'll continue to. And in Tai Chi, we aim to have a smooth, gradual, but complete weight shift in nearly every move. And in several moves, you, you shift weight multiple times. Shift weight back. And as you shift weight, feel the muscles in your legs and hips. They're starting to work as you load up one leg. Load up the other. Load up one leg. Load up the other. And this, this gradual, smooth, but complete weight shift is one of the sources why Tai Chi is such a terrific exercise for making the legs and hips stronger and improving balance. All right, next movement component. So shift weight back. Turn your hips, rotate out. That's it. Reset. Shift weight back, rotate out, reset. Shift weight back, rotate out. All right, so let me, let me just drop something in here. If in doing these movements, you experience instability, it's really helpful information. What you wanna do if you experience in, instability is, okay, how can I adjust my stance? to feel more stable. And that might mean, for example, right here, my stance is pretty narrow. So that might mean widening my stance. I may be stretched out and, and that feels like it's unstable. So I'll bring my legs more underneath me. And I, I encourage you, if you have any sense of instability as we do this exercise, just adjust your stance until you feel more stable. All right, next movement component is a weight shift, so shift weight back, rotate out, 
shift weight while you've rotated out. There you go. Reset. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Now, the next movement component we call intermediate step. So, weights forward. The back leg is pretty much empty. Now, bring that forward. Land lightly on the ball of the foot. You can see my somewhere around the heel of my weighted leg. There we go. Intermediate step. Reset. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Reset. Those of you who've been at this a while, as you, as you do the intermediate step, you want to sink and draw into your lower dancing. For those of you that, that are just new to this, don't worry about it. So, weights forward, shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Nice. All right. Next movement component is a step forward. So, follow me. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. And ideally, your foot's pointing straight ahead. This front foot now is pointing straight ahead. Reset. We're going to add the next movement component, which is a weight shift. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. Shift weight. Pause. Now feel your stance. Does it feel stable? If it feels stable, great. If it does not feel stable, then make adjustments so it does. And ideally, your back heel is on the ground. So if you find your back heel comes up, maybe you make this step forward a little shorter so your stance is not as stretched out. All right, reset. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. Shift weight. Now we're set to do it on the other side. So shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. Shift weight. We got room to do one more here in the studio. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. Shift weight. Nice. Adjust your position. All right. Now, does that feel like you're working your legs and hips? Sure does to me. This is exercise. All right, let's do some more. And then uh, one other element I encourage you to begin to, to feel for. And one, uh, uh, one aspect of Tai Chi that uh, we give a fair amount of attention to as we learn it is our posture. And by our posture, I mean how we organize our structure. And throughout this exercise, we're aiming to keep our posture vertical, our head over the pelvis. And there can be a tendency to lean. Uh, and leaning tends to decrease stability. So if, you're, uh, if on a weight shift, you're feeling, whoa, then you might find, hey, if I come back to the vertical, I feel more stable. So now let's sit up here, feel the top of your head. And ideally it's aligned over the pelvis and you'll be more or less vertical there. Let's shift weight back, rotate out, shift weight, intermediate step, step forward, smoothly shift weight, feel the top of your head. Is it aligned over the bottom of your pelvis or are you leaning? Feel your back heel. Ideally, it's down. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. Shift weight. Let's do one more of those. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. Shift weight. Nice. Okay, reset. Now we're going to add one other movement component. So put your weight forward. Now feel the corners of your mouth. 
elevate each corner of your mouth. All right. Let's try that. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step with a smile. Step forward. Shift weight. Nice. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step with a smile. Step forward. Shift weight. One more of those. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. Shift weight. Nice. 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 All right. So catch your breath. That is definitely exercise. Uh, but I think it's time to up the degree of difficulty and add some more moving parts, arms and hands. What do you say? So the, the movement we're building up to is called in Tai Chi, part the wild horse's mane. Part the wild horse's mane. Now, I'm not responsible for that name. I'm just passing it on. But that's, uh, you know, that's the name of this movement, at least translated uh, from Mandarin into English. So I'm going to show you the final position. It's this. So foot forward, weights on it. Same side arm and hand is extended, and you're looking at your palm. Opposite hand is down at the hip. That's the final position. Weight forward, same side arm and hand. You're looking at it. Other hands down by the hips. All right. Switch legs. Switch arms. That's it. That's where we're going to end up. Switch legs. Switch arms. Feel that. One leg's forward, the same side hand is forward. One more time on the other side. Got a question in the studio. How is our weight distributed on it? Uh, on this, ideally, all your weight's forward. You're going for a full weight shift. Now, if you've got something going on in a weight-bearing joint, hip, knee, ankle, foot, and that causes discomfort, then back off. Don't put all your weight on, uh, on the leg that has discomfort. And adjust the movement. Adjust the amount of weight shift. Adjust the stance so you can do this comfortably. All right. So put this leg forward, please. Same side hand, extended, other hand at the hip. So our first movement component, shift weight back. We've done that before. Now we're going to rotate out and we're going to do a movement with the arms we call hold the ball. Why do we call it hold the ball? Because it looks like we're holding the ball. So feel that. And now feel your shoulder. If it's hiked up, relax it. Now shift weight. Intermediate step. We've done that before. Step out. And now on the weight shift, the bottom hand is going to extend forward as the top hand goes down to the hip like this. And we get to the final posture on the other side. Weight shift forward. There you go. Nice. Check your posture. Ideally, your vertical. There we go. Now we can do it on the other side. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Hold the ball. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. As you shift weight, the bottom hand is going to extend to the front, like this. That's it. Parting the wild horse of me. Now, feel your back foot. Ideally, it's on the floor. I'm seeing a little steam coming out of people's ears here in the studio. And then that happens. You know, this is um, increasingly sophisticated, asymmetric movement. And for most of us that have not learn that kind of movement until we get into Tai Chi. You know, it can be tricky initially, uh, but you got to start somewhere. So uh, a characteristic of Tai Chi movement or an ideal we're aiming for in Tai Chi is that it's an increasingly connected whole body movement. And there's a wonderful aphorism out of a group of writings called the, the Tai Chi classics that expresses it this way. In Tai Chi, one part moves, all parts move. One part stops. All parts stop. Now, what, what I invite you to do is just take a break and watch this.
And does it look like my arm movement's connected to what my lower body's doing? That's the idea. And if you haven't done Tai Chi, that's, that, that might be new, but that's what you're aiming for. It may be able to see, once you begin to get a feel for that, the arm movements become really more simple. Because now I'm just shifting weights, stretching up the legs, and that's moving the hands to the final position. From this ball shape, I shift weight, and the hands get to the final position. So let's give that a whirl. Shift weight back, rotate out. Shift weight, intermediate step and pause. Now make a ball. Now it's the lower hand that's going to go in front. And you want to power that by the weight shift and the stretching of the legs. So step. Now shift weight and stretch and have that position the hand. Yeah, that's the idea. Palms facing you. There you go. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step forward. Pause. Now hold the ball. Now, shift weight, stretch, and have that position in the arms. Yeah, nice. All right, so a quick recap. We've learned two Qigong movements. What are those? Follow me. We'll just do a quick review here. Lifting the sky. Where you stretch up the legs, circle up and out. Sinking the legs, circle down and in. Stretch up the legs, circle up and out. Sink into the legs, circle down and in. Then we learn separate heaven and earth. So to turn one hand over, stretch up one side, down the other. Sink into the legs, hands come back to here, and stretch up one side, down the other. Repeat. Nice. That's separating heaven and earth our Qigong warm-ups. Then we learn the first Tai Chi movement in a Tai Chi form, commencement. Let's review that. So we sink into the legs, up come the arms. Stretch up through the legs, out go the arms. Sink into the legs, to retract the arms and hands. Stretch up the legs as the arms go down. And repeat, bend, stretch, bend, stretch. Bend, stretch, bend, stretch. Nice. Then we up the degree of difficulty. We did Tai Chi walking. Let's review that. Keep the hands out of it for a moment. We shift weight back, rotate out, shift weight, intermediate step. Step forward, shift weight. And you can feel how this is working your legs and hips. It's smooth, gradual, but complete weight shift and stepping. One more of those, shift weight back, rotate out, shift weight, intermediate step, step out, shift weight. Then we had more moving parts. Part the wild horse and me. Give it a whirl. Shift weight back, rotate out, hold the ball. Shift weight, intermediate step, step forward. And I have the weight shift and the stretching up the legs help position your arms and hands. Shift weight back, rotate out, shift weight, intermediate step, step out, shift weight. Nice. Reset your position. One more time. All right. Let's move a couple other parts. So feel the corners of your mouth. Elevate them. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step out. Smiling as we part the wild horse's mane. We can do that. Shift weight back. Rotate out. Shift weight. Intermediate step. Step out. Shift weight. Whoo. I don't know about you, but that feels like a Tai Chi workout to me. So 
what I'd like to do now is a cool down, a Tai Chi cool down. So we're going to use a uh, symmetrical, more simple movement that will help us. Uh, it will help clear the steam coming out of some people's ears and also settle our nervous system, settle our minds, help us relax at the end of our practice. So this is called vertical circles plus quad squats. So we'll be bending and stretching our legs and hips. So extend your hands. This is the front of your vertical circle. Now feel your shoulders and your elbows. If they're tense, soften them, make it smaller. Then sink in your legs to circle down and back. Stretch up through the legs to circle up and out. Sink into the legs to circle down and back. Stretch up the legs to circle up and out. Bending to the back of your circles. Lightly stretching to the front. I think most people would agree this is a little easier than part the wild horse me. And why? Well, it's symmetrical. It's easier for our nervous systems to program. And there's fewer movement components. And the more complicated Tai Chi movements typically have more movement components and are asymmetrical. And then there's some you do on one leg and that ups the that ups balance challenge. But Tai Chi movements like commencement also include symmetrical bending and stretching. So we can add some Qigong to this movement, so follow me. Come to the front of your circle, feel the top of your head, inhale, and on the exhale, circle down and back. Releasing down the body. Inhale. Exhale, release as you circle down and back. Aiming to stimulate with that exhale in this movement a relaxation response in your body. Releasing tension and stress. Calming your nervous system. And just maybe quieting your mind a little. And many people that get into Tai Chi and Qigong report, over time, they begin to experience a quieter mind. Maybe not at the start when you're learning new movements, but once those movements stabilize in your nervous system, and you can use them to stimulate a relaxation response. A number of things might happen inside your body. Release of physical tension and stress. Reduction of emotional tension and stress. A reduction in mental tension and stress, which many of us experience as a quieter mind. And if in doing this movement and aiming to stimulate the downward release, you begin to experience at least some degree of internal quiet, or at least less internal noise, you're onto something. You've got a tool now. And Tai Chi and Qigong provide wonderful tools to move the body to get physical activity that we need for health without pounding it, as well as settling emotions and calming the mind. Aspects of Tai Chi that make it uh, different than many types of Western exercise. Two more. Last one for now. 
and just stand for a moment. And like we did at the start, inhale. Feel the top of your head. Exhale, release down your body. Continue to do that for a few more breaths. So we'll have a moment for Q&A. Uh, if you could, if you have any questions uh, on Zoom, you can enter those in the chat and then Paige will relay those to me. We'll also have an opportunity for questions here in the studio. While you're composing your questions, for those of you that are new to Chicago Tai Chi, so we offer a full schedule of classes, Tai Chi, Qigong, and meditation. You can find those on our website, www.chicagotaichi.org. And you join our classes by getting a membership in Chicago Tai Chi. And we have different levels of membership uh, that have you know, different levels of benefit and participation. We also offer uh, workshops. We've got one coming up in the beginning of June, our summer practices workshop, where we'll meet on a Saturday and explore aspects of these practices that help energize us and connect to the vibrant energy of summer. All right, so with that, let's wrap the celebration of World Tai Chi and Jigong Day. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been delightful to be with you. We'll conclude with the Taoist bow. So here's right hand, left hand, and we'll bow to each other out of gratitude for this opportunity to get together and practice this ancient and immensely beneficial material together. Thank you for joining us. Good day.